us is with Msiwa Lakota. Take it away, Chris Alda. I'll be quiet. <laughs> Well, that's right. Uh, we're still uh, at uh, Church Square here in Pretoria, where now the numbers have really picked up for this opposition march from uh, Church Square to the Union buildings against uh, President Jacob Zuma. Well, we've spoken to a number of uh, political uh, leaders, uh, political party leaders since uh, this morning. We'll also chat uh, to the COPE leader, Musiwa Lukota, as well. But uh, certainly police have got their hands full here as the numbers keep rising. We're seeing the different uh, members and supporters of course from the different uh, political parties including the FF, the DA, the UDM, the ACDP, COPE as well as other political parties as well but what we certainly uh, can state at this point according to a statement that was sent out by the presidency is that uh, it does seem to be business as usual on the part of President Jacob Zuma you know of course today is also his 75th birthday, he is uh, meeting with some of uh, the leadership, uh, the uh, Sheikh from the state of Qatar uh, here in Pretoria and uh, it seems to be business as usual on his part as these opposition parties are marching uh, to his doorstep over a number of issues, of course, including the dissatisfaction relating to his uh, cabinet reshuffle. Uh, let me chat now uh, to the COPE leader, Musua Lugota, about their involvement uh, in this march as well. Ndati Lugota, thank you very much for your time. You're also mobilizing here today together with a number of uh, political parties marching with one voice to the union buildings. That is correct. We, for some time already, we have pointed out that President Zuma has led the ANC away from the constitutional route that President Mandela introduced and showed us how to run affairs in keeping with the constitution. The route that uh, former President Mbeki followed on the footsteps of President Mandela. Since he came, he's taken the ANC completely off course of that constitution. And we are here to demand that he must go and that the ANC must take responsibility and support this move to get him off and correct itself if it wants to continue to participate as part of the government of the people of South Africa. Having sending that message that you want to send today to the African National Congress included, there doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, that um, consensus coming from within the African National Congress uh, to heed the call of opposition parties and civil society organizations for President Jacob Zuma to step down. We've seen the unified voice at which they came out of with the National Working Committee. So what do opposition parties plan to do following that, apart from March to the Union buildings? What is quite clear is that President Zuma has managed to capture the NEC of the ANC. He has managed to capture some the cabinet, the caucus of the ANC. Increasing voices inside the African National Congress are coming out to say the route you are taking is not the ANC route. The veterans of the ANC have come out on this issue. Increasing members and supporters of the ANC on the ground, the churches, business people, sports bodies, political parties of the of the opposition. South Africans in increasing numbers are quite clear that what Zuma is doing together with the support of the ANC, a leadership, is not what is good for the future of our country. This is mass work and South Africans are learning every day and as in the case of the apartheid regime, and as Archbishop Tutu warned some time ago, Zuma and the ANC will find that they will not have the majority of the people of the South Africa, of South Africa with them. That time has come. Do you think this is the tipping point uh, when it comes to uh, the issues surrounding President Jacob Zuma and the unhappiness uh, over certain affairs? Do you think this is a tipping point for South Africans? Uh, through the 
push of uh, civil society and polit opposition political parties such as yourselves? It certainly is a tipping point and it's also a tipping point for the ANC. If that caucus of the ANC will vote for Zuma again when we go to parliament, that will be an endorsement of opposition parties to get the support of the masses of the people. The ANC will not get the majority that it has gotten before. South Africans have begun to turn their backs on it and they will turn their backs on it again. Could you perhaps attribute that also because we've spoken to quite a number of other opposition political parties who have said that they're canvassing ANC MPs to vote with them when the time comes for the vote of no confidence. So are you also pinning your hopes on that? It's a question I've asked all the other political, the opposition political parties as well. I'm not even uh, asking the caucus of the ANC. I remind them of our history. Under President Mandela, we had to vote on the issue of abortion. And under President Mandela and the leadership of the ANC, we allowed people to vote according to their consciences. Those who felt that they could not support abortion being legalized were free to vote against, and they did. Others abstained. It was a question of conscience. People who take oath of office, they take it in their own name and right. Under President uh, Tabombegi, we had to vote on the question of the gay and lesbian rights. Again, it was a question of conscience, and we recognized the right of members of, of caucus of the ANC to have the right to decide whether they want to vote for or against, and that did happen. It's the first time this week I hear uh, the chief whip of the ANC saying that they are going to punish caucus members of the ANC if they don't vote for somebody who has already broken the law. Because President Zuma Bray broke his oath of office and the Constitutional Court made that funding. For them to threaten the caucus members of the ANC is to think they can compel them to commit a crime. Because if you vote for somebody who's broken the law, it means you are breaking the law. You are compelling that person to break the law. But if that is unsuccessful, then what next? We've seen quite a number of these marches take place. What next for our opposition political parties if uh, the steps that you've taken thus far do not work? Beyond that, we will continue this campaign because we then have to prepare and we have to talk to the people of our country. By the time of the elections of 2019, the ANC must, must not be voted for by the people of our country because it is it will have shown itself to be an organization that is not committed to the constitution of our country. All South Africans must refuse to vote for the ANC and they must vote for any other uh, party that is prepared to follow the constitution of the country. Period. Dr. Musuela Kota, thank you very much uh, for your time there. The COPE leader, uh, Musuela Kota, also part uh, of this national uh, call of, to action, uh, marching here, of course, from Church Square uh, to the Union buildings. We're expecting to leave here at about uh, 12 o'clock. We understand that there is quite a stronger police presence that is at the Union buildings already. My colleague that you've spoken to already, Aldrin Sampia, is there. He'll all he'll bring you all the latest from there. But we still expecting thousands more uh, to come through here to Church Squares. The rain has also now subsided as well. We'll certainly bring you a whole lot more here from Church Square.